What's up cooks? It's Wednesday. Today, we're gonna do a little update on our container garden. We've got a lot of things going on out there. We've got things growing. We got some fruit coming on and we're almost ready for another harvest. We are also going to talk about another one of my cooking influences. This is one of my original one after my mom and my grandma grandmothers. She was the very first uh, like celebrity influencer that I had in my life and that is Martha Stewart. So what's up? It's Wednesday. Let's do this. So we have a lot of action going on out in the container garden on our deck. Um, if you've been with me all this time, we've uh, planted some stuff in some containers. We got peppers, we got herbs, we got all kinds of stuff. We did some topping of those peppers. And let me tell you, the topping has really just totally changed how our peppers are growing. So we need to do an update because we got some we got a lot of stuff going on out there. If you want to take a look at um, how we set up our container garden and how I topped our peppers, I'll put links down in the description to that. But let's head out and take a look at what's going on out there. So here is the garden and it is growing like mad. I would say that topping those pepper plants was the best thing. At first I was scared because I was like, they don't look too good. But they have um, branched out and they got peppers all over them. So let's take a look at what we have. First off, the thyme is looking pretty good. Um, we have German and English and they're growing like crazy. I'm having some issues with my, uh, with my parsleys here. They're browning at the bottom. I don't know what I need to do. If you have any ideas for me, let me know. My biggest issue right now is with my, pum, my little pumpkin and my cilantro. I pretty much, I didn't trim my cilantro. It went to seed and it's just a hot mess. So I think that's coming out of here, but we're going to uh, transplant this pumpkin and see if we can um, help it out a little bit. So here are some of the peppers and we are, look at that bad boy. We are filled with peppers over here. We got a big one growing here. We got tons of flowers. We have, uh, look at all the new growth on these bad boys. This over here, we got this big one growing here. We have a big one on this side. Ooh we have tons of flowers here. I had some small ones on here. I don't know, here are some little baby ones. There's a little baby, isn't that cute? This is one that was supposed to be like purple. And it's, uh, look at that. So we have about one, two, three, four. There's one down there. There's one down there. We got him here, we got him there. We got a pepper going there. We got a pepper going there. This plant here has about six. This one here has three big ones. This one here has got some nice sized ones. And we're nice and filled out here, so we're looking good. My basil plant is looking a little sad. I don't know what the deal is. I think I need to trim it because I think it's trying to go to seed. Um, yeah, bad basil mommy, right? And here is the rosemary. And then we got another pepper over here. He's, he needs to be watered. We need to water out here because he's looking a little limp. So we're about to add some bone meal to the um, to the peppers, 
Eric's got it going, so let's get this done so we can get him some um, much needed calcium. Look at my poor cilantro. little pumpkins what were we thinking we be not looking good pumpkin we got a lot of babies here just gotta keep them happy I mean we got a lot of blossoms here they said we be little I assumed it was gonna be little like little little Shetland ponies right little baby ones Shetland ponies yeah, you know, they're not full-grown horses they will never be full-grown horses. Well, I was hoping these little pumpkins would be never full-grown, but... Right? So let's go ahead and... Yeah, that thing's looking a little rough. Look like eight tablespoons. So Eric's putting on some bone meal on the papas. Ooh, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! He's got a big, big daddy on him. This plant over here has got like six peppers. He isn't doing anything yet, but he's got some flowers on him. He's doing something. Look it in there. Dun 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 Get down there. Looky looky. You got all kinds of blossom. See all the buds on this guy? Yeah, look at that. So guys, that is the update on the garden. We got peppers. Gilor! Yay! So Eric just said, oh yeah, you gotta have Martha there, right? I think that's because his little sassy attitude about my fascination, my uh, total obsession with Martha Stewart. It has been going on since her original show, um, probably when I was in high school, back in the 80s, right? When Martha Stewart came out. I remember her being on Oprah way back in the day and people were just starting to get Martha crazy. And Oprah was talking about her, you know, drying lavender in her basement and all this fun stuff. And people were just absolutely Martha crazy. And I was as well. So I can say that after my mom and after my grandmother's, um, Martha Stewart, was my first non-family cooking influence. And um, as a matter of fact, I bought my first stand mixer because it was the same one that she had. It was a white Pro 5 uh, KitchenAid, and I bought it at Kitchen Collection. And prior to that, I only had used a Sunbeam. And if you guys have been watching for a while, you know that not only is she an influence on me in terms of cooking, but also in terms of decorating, in terms of everything. My, still my favorite color is Martha Stewart Green. And if you guys have been with me all this time, you know that I am completely and totally obsessed with the Martha Green stand mixer. So much so, that I had a search running for almost eight years trying to find one when I finally did. What's your other favorite green? Oh, and jadeite, right? It's sort of a jadeite color, and Martha, that used to be Martha's color, was the jadeite. Um, a couple years ago, um, I interacted with Martha, and she gave me 
uh, an autographed picture that says, to Amy, best wishes, Martha Stewart. And this hangs in my dining room. It's mainly in the dining room instead of the kitchen because I really don't have any extra wall space in the kitchen. I really would like it to be in the kitchen because every time I cook, I can look at Martha and say, Martha, what should I do, right? Because um, she is totally one of my inspirations, but I don't have room in here in the kitchen just because there's just cabinets on all the walls. So there's no really way for me to hang Martha in the kitchen. So she is in the dining room. And here is my beloved Martha Stewart autograph picture. I love this. So as you can see, I have a lot of Martha Stewart cookbooks. She has written probably 30, I would imagine, or more over the years. And this is just what I have in my collection of her cookbooks is obviously growing, right? The very first cookbook I ever got of hers, and it's not her first cookbook, is the Martha Stewart cookbook. This is a general purpose cookbook. And I really can't say that I cook out of this cookbook a lot just because, um, I don't know, there's just so much in here and I just really haven't had the opportunity to dive into this cookbook the way I really want to. I've had it for years, but I love this. And this is like one of my most cherished cookbooks that I have in my collection. So after I got the Martha Stewart cookbook, this is collected recipes for every day. I got a copy of her original Martha Stewart Entertaining. This is, I believe, her first book. And this book, now, if you look at it, it's dated, um, but this has got, this, this book is fabulous. I absolutely love it. Um, it has pretty sophisticated recipes. They're not recipes that you're really gonna cook all the time. They're recipes that you're gonna cook for entertaining. So you have uh, asparagus with a beurre blanc, salmon scallops with sorrel sauce, uh, roasted leg of lamb with a garlic guava glaze, um, cream caramel, sauteed wild mushrooms. So this is, you know, a pretty sophisticated, in, from what, you know, at my cooking level, this is a pretty sophisticated book but I absolutely love this book. This is one of my favorites as well. So the next cookbook that I got was her hors d'oeuvres handbook. And I don't really like make a lot of hors d'oeuvres, but this cookbook is beautiful. Um, it's got beautiful pictures, look at that. Um, and this book is old. Um, it is, what year, 99, so. You know, this is, this is getting kind of old, but this, the pictures are not like really dated. Um, Patachu, pita chips, um, ways that you can use tortillas. Uh, this book is fantastic. I just love it. Um, it's a great book if, you, if you're having sort of an appetizer party or you want some stuff that people can snack on before they, you know, the main dinner is ready. Um, this is a great book to refer to. So this is Martha Stewart's hors d'oeuvres. So after her hors d'oeuvres book, I got her Christmas cookbook. And this book is great because it has a lot of uh, uh, recipes that you can use for your Christmas dinner. That's what I mainly use it for. Panna cotta, eggnog panna cotta, risotto with three mushrooms. There's a lot of stuff that you can get out of here and for Christmas because Christmas is, you know, you want really special dishes, but it's not like there's specifically traditional things that you cook for Christmas, unlike Thanksgiving, right? Um, I love this book. It's fantastic. So she later came up with an update to the original cookbook and she came out with the Martha Stewart Living Cookbook Original Classics. This is the updated and revised version of her best-selling cookbook. And I got this because I wanted to see uh, 
the new things that she's come up with sort of for her everyday cooking. And she's added a lot of things in here that, you know, more updated recipes and she's added some, you know, international recipes or ethnic recipes. So she has, you know, stuff like Texas caviar. Yay, right? Because I like Southern style, uh, uh, Southwest style food, Southern food. Um, Provencal potatoes. Um, she's doing uh, salt crusted potatoes. That was really popular a couple years ago. People were salt crusting their potatoes. Um, oh, Boston cream pie, right? This is fantastic. And uh, so this is an updated and revised version of her original classics cookbook. Right after that, she brought out her new classics cookbook to go along with this. So this is an additional 1,200 recipes. Um, and this book covers a lot of similar things. Oh my gosh, look at this. Yeah, right. <laughs> that looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. This is rice noodles with Chinese broccoli and shiitake mushrooms. Really, really good. So this is sort of a second companion. So these are her original classics, and this is the new classics. So everybody knows about Martha Stewart Living Magazine, and she used to do an annual each year with all the recipes from that issue, issues of that year. Um, I have a couple of her annuals. I don't have all of them. I only have three. I have 2004, 2003, and 2002. Um, so this just covers everything out of her magazine. And this is similar to what um, America's Test Kitchen does and Southern Living. And also I have this Martha Stewart Cupcakes book. This book is great. Um, this is actually, this was a, I bought this used. It was a form of library copy. But there's some great recipes in here for cupcakes. So I have to have Martha's Entertaining. This is her modern version of the entertaining uh, book. I don't think it's like supposed to be an update of that original book, but it has what she's doing um, as of the publication of this book. This is actually her house, her uh, Skylands house. Um, so it's, you know, modern updated styles and updated recipes. And this book is beautiful. The photos are beautiful and um, the recipes are beautiful. Then I also have Martha Stewart's Baking Handbook. Um, this is er you know everything of bakeys, cookies, cakes, pies, tarts, cheesecakes, all that fun stuff, all in one book. And this is one of my most recent books that I've gotten, the Martha Stewart's Cooking to uh, School. This is like recipes, it's great for the new cook because it's techniques driven. It covers uh, tools, but it also covers all the basics, how to make a brown stock, how to make, uh, you know, regular stocks, um, meat, fish, and poultry, vegetables, beans and grains, pastas. This is similar to um, the Food Lab cookbook. Um, and the America's Test Kitchen has a cooking school book. This is an absolute fantastic book. A couple of my non-cooking books, I have this Martha Stewart's Homekeeping Handbook, and this is your essential guide for everything in your home. There's a lot of great tips in here um, covering each room. So kitchen, bedroom, home office, utility spaces, closets, organizing, cleaning tips, all that fun stuff. This is a really, really good book. And I also have her original Martha Stewart's gardening book. Um, Martha Stewart is like a fantastic gardener. We all know that. And this covers her gardens, um, how she plants, how she prunes, how she uh, grows her fruits and vegetables. And there's some uh, 
a few recipes in here, but it's mostly, you know, just gardening, the how-to of gardening, how to maintain your garden and um, harvesting. So what do you guys think of my big, huge Martha Stewart uh, cookbook collection? It is growing. Um, I absolutely love Martha Stewart. And uh, my goal is to get all of her books. Eric's back there cringing. So, uh, so one of my big cooking influences is definitely Martha Stewart. So cooks, it's Wednesday. What's up? I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at my Martha Stewart cookbook collection and a little bit of my obsession um, over Martha Stewart. And um, I hope you enjoy the update to the garden. Um, we're moving forward with that. I think next year I'm going to do some planting from seed because it's going to uh, significantly reduce the cost, that's for sure. So I hope you have a great week, and um, if you like this video, please subscribe below, leave me a comment and a like, and visit my website at amylearnstocook.com. If you want to talk about these books, um, I'll put links down in the description to all these books, but come over and join my Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash amylearnstocook. You can also catch me on Instagram at Cooking with Amy. So after I got these two cookbooks, the next cookbook I got was Martha Stewart. Stewart's. 